Hey guys, Kirk and Jason here with Kirk Giordano Plastering. Today what I'm going to show you is how we do a dash finish. We're going to match this finish here. But before I show you how we actually use our hand hopper and spray that on, I'm going to show you how we scratch this. Now a fellow called me the other day and he says, man, I was doing soffits and it kept falling down. He didn't have, he had this wire instead of this wire. I'll show you something. If you have the right wire, it sticks a lot better on a lid. This is a lid or soffit, or however technical term you want to put it. What I'll generally do is I'll spread this out first before I start to spread this out because now this holds this. If, if it's a hole like this where I didn't spread this first, it just falls straight through. What we're prepared to do here today is scratch the entire thing, brown it, and then when I get to the dash, I'm going to show you that. Okay guys, now what I'm going to do is, a fellow like me working with Jay on something like this is, okay, I've scratched all four of these. I'm about to tear this down and put a big 12 foot ladder and scratch that. Now, I'm going to go ahead and scratch this like so, and then I have work on the top. And when I'm done with the top, this will be set enough for my next coat. Now, I'm using a same day system. I usually do on ceilings, I'll, I'll waffle the ceilings, meaning I'll crisscross it. I'll scratch it this way, and I'll scratch it this way. It gives it a waffle type of... So when this dries, I can put my next coat on and it sticks real well. Anyway, I'm going to go ahead and finish scratching everything, and then when I come to brown it, I'll show you that. But the main thing I want to show you guys on this video is how do we match a dash finish when... This is perlite. The aggregate is perlite. How do you match perlite with sand? I'll show you when we get to that stage. All right, guys, what I'm doing now is putting on a lot of fat. I want it fat and ugly, fat and ugly. And then when I go ahead and darby it, I got a lot of excess mud. I'd rather have it fat and ugly, which just is a term we use. It means a lot, of, a lot of stucco on the wall. So here's what I'm going to do now. I'm using this as a rod to get everything true and plumb. I used to work behind a pump and I'd do this eight hours a day. The pump would pump it on and I'd come and just uh, straighten it out. I did that for a number of years, so I got a lot of practice doing this stuff. And what I do now is I'm going to let this set for about oh, 15 minutes and it is going to be hard as a rock. I let this set for a, an hour. I'm going to lose this and not be able to float it. I'm going to come, I'm going to hard rubber float it. I'm going to hose it down to this particular material. You've got to wet it, saturate it. And then I'm going to hard, or I'm going to sponge float it with a green sponge float. I'm going to bring the sand or aggregate out. I'm going to bring that aggregate out. So it's something like this that makes my job easier when I go to dash it. Okay guys, what I'm doing now is I'm hard rubber floating it. Why am I hard? <coughs> Excuse me. Why am I hard rubber floating it? Is because I want to compress it. I want to really embed both of these coats. I embed them in the self-furred lath, and this straightens the walls too. These walls are really true and plumb. Sometimes I come to wavy walls. I don't have to do this. <coughs> Another tip: brand new float. I'll usually bend the floats up just a little bit. Otherwise, when I go to float, sometimes they'll drag. Anyway, we're hard rubber floating it right now, and then in a, in a couple minutes, I'm going to sponge float it. And you might say, what's the difference between a sponge float? Well, this compresses it, compacts it, and it, you can see the grit. But this guy here, get this Darby out of the way. Now this actually, and it brings out the aggregate. And I'm using a lot of water in here. This particular material needs a lot of water. Either we spray it or we put it on with a float. Uh, I mean, this is, this is uh, a requirement for this particular material. By the way, I don't, I don't uh, expect anybody who doesn't have time in by at least 15 years to try to do what we're doing today because this takes a whole lot of practice and there's a whole bunch of stuff I cannot show you that we just take for granted. Now what I'm doing again is a lot of water in here. 
this this material requires it so I'm bringing the aggregate out it's just another step to get me closer to matching this very heavy perlite finish here's something that you don't often see but somebody screwed up this corner right here when they lathed it which was me so now I have to build it out by hand so what I do is I put my Darby here and just come straight up and get this loaded here and this is a make-believe corner it's actually a quarter in dented and I take it upward now I allow that to set allow that to set that makes a true and plumb corner uh, just in case you're doing corners and you're not just perfect you have to chew them out anyhow we'll show you the dash when we get to that stage because that's what this is really about okay guys what we're doing now is we're using a hand hopper and the orifice that I had before was for plaster and unfortunately I didn't have a bigger orifice so I just gouged it out with my handy dandy file and made this bigger because our sand has got to go through this hole when we pull this trigger the sand the big sand got to go through here I'll show you something else too while we're at it all right this is this is plaster sand it's called plaster felton or ole it's very fine sand it's for plastering depending on what material yard you go to you might get anything this is what we're using for the dash this is a very heavy sand uh, light sand just it wouldn't match this because of the perlite the perlite is pretty big so just a tip folks so I'm gonna go ahead and begin dashing and get this project done all right guys we are concluding this instead of the regular scratch and brown material I'm, I'm using a color coat it's uh, 1620 that way it'll show a lot better with what we're doing <laughs> if you notice there's more covering than actual it took me longer to cover than to do the cement work but that's a dash for you it goes everywhere soupy mud the mud has got to be real soupy to get through this guy here and the reason I'm doing this is because it's getting stuck in there so I'm helping it out I'm gonna go on the other side you get the idea we'll show it to you when we're complete with everything all right guys now nothing but the easy stuff left I'm cleaning this travertine towel because even if you paper perfect like what we did sometimes a little bit of stucco will find its way under there we got a lot of travertine tile we got a lot of doors <laughs> we got a lot of stuff here that we had to cover stamp concrete You're shooting a, a hand hopper man that just that makes a humongous mess anyhow this is the results we went ahead and did a color coat on this simply because it takes 28 days prior for them to paint and they got other things that they have to paint I thought well for the sake of video I can show what a dash gun does better with the color coat and for the sake of these folks it'll look a lot prettier while they're waiting the, tw the 30 days for it to cure prior to painting anyhow as usual Jay and I thank you folks for watching and we'll see you on the next one.